This is a five part tutorial series, five small parts, and at the end of those five parts, you will make a game that's kind of like volleyball. Um, so part one, we will be getting into setting up our level, everything we need. We'll code our opponents, we'll code our player, we'll code the UI, and then lastly, we will code the ball. So to get started, open up Unity Hub. This will be a 3D project and give it a name. And when you're ready, go ahead and click create. Okay, step one, you're gonna need to go to your window package manager and in this window that pops up go ahead and change from packages and project to unity registry and look for the ai navigation package and click install we will be using ai navigation for our opponents that's all we need for that in our hierarchy go ahead and right click and create a cube i'm going to call this the player floor Ooh, did not mean that to be in all caps and we're also gonna tag it as player floor so that when the ball hits it, it knows which floor it's hit. So play floor, hit save, go back to the player floor and add the tag we just created. Let's scale it up so maybe it's a bit bigger, like 40 on the X and 40 on the Z. Yes, a big player floor. And then I'm gonna position it back on the Z by like however wide I want the opponent's floor to be, like maybe 25, sweet. And then in the assets folder, let's create a new folder, call it materials and right click this folder and create a material. And we will just call this floor. You can give it a color if you want in this albedo, but it's gonna turn red if the opponent hits yours. And then if you hit the opponent's floor, maybe it'll turn like a green color. So you know you get a point, but maybe for a base color, I'll make it kind of like this gray blue color sweet now let's make our opponents floor so go ahead and right click in the hierarchy create a 3d object that's a cube I'm gonna call it opponent floor do the same thing let's add a tag click the plus sign call it opponent floor go to back to the floor and tag it with the tag you just made let's scale it up on the X it's gonna be 40 and maybe on the Z it's gonna be smaller maybe they don't need as much room yeah they get like like half the volleyball court. I mean, it's up to you. You could give them a bigger volleyball court, but this seems this seems stacked in my room. Like I said, it's kind of like volleyball. It's not actually volleyball. Um, okay, let's give it a component that is a nav mesh surface. There it is. So that this square back here will be a surface that our opponents can walk on. Go ahead and mark it as static up at the top. And then down here in the nav mesh surface, go ahead and click bake. Ooh, why did it bake the whole thing? Yikes. The player floor is not a nav mesh. This one is though. Huh. Do I have to like move it off a little? Clear, bake. Weird. All right, well, hit bake on it. I don't know why it's the whole two floors. That's not great. We only want the opponents to be able to be on the back floors. See if we can't figure that out later. Uh, and let's add the floor material to the opponent's floor as well. Cool. In the demo that I made, there was like a another back floor that was just back here that we could add um, a person to only be in the back. This is not the best way to do this, but it will work. Um, so you can create another 3D cube and I'm gonna call it like back opponent floor. And this cube will also be 40 on the X, but maybe it's like two on the Z. Why is it all the way down there? There we go. And maybe we'll position it to be like negative six. So I put like 6.2 so that there's this little gap between it. So like maybe the nav mesh agent can't go past that gap. Again, not the best way to do it. There's better ways to do it, but I'm trying to keep the code as simple as possible for you. So let's add a nav mesh surface to this as well. Also mark it as static and also bake it. So there, now it has that little square that uh, <laughs> our opponent will be trapped within and it can only live in the back there. Okay, let's make a net that's gonna live in the middle so we know where the boundary is. So let's right click and create a cube. I'm gonna call this net. I'm gonna scale it once again to be 40 on the X, maybe three on the Y, so it's kind of tall. And then like 0.1 on the Z, so it's very thin. And then once again, excuse me, zero, zero, zero. Awesome. Actually, it's position on the Y should be up, maybe like a one. Does that look correct? Something like that, right? So it's like kind of right on the edge between where our floor is and where the opponent's floor is. Sick. Uh, let's give this also a material just for funsies. Go ahead and create a new material and I'm gonna call this like net. I'm gonna give it a different sh shader. Let's go legacy shaders, transparent, 
doesn't really matter, diffuse, I guess. And then we will go lower in the alpha and give it kind of like a blue. So there, our net is kind of this like glassy color. Cool, okay, next up we're gonna make our ball. So let's right click in the hierarchy, create a 3D object that is a sphere, and I'm gonna just call it ball. Um, I'm gonna position it up, so zero, I don't know, yeah, like eight and zero. I'm positioning it over where our opponent is gonna be so that they kind of serve it to us, but in the future you can change where the ball's position is if you want. Let's make sure that this ball has a rigid body since that will be handling a lot of the physics options. Use gravity is on, that's great. And in its sphere collider, it's looking for a physic material. Let's make one. So right click your materials folder and create, not a material, but where is it? Physic material down here, bam. And I'm gonna call this ball. And on this, let's set our friction to zero, our static friction to zero, and the bounciness to be like like, like 0.8 maybe. I'm also gonna set the bounce combine to be maximum. You can play around with these values once we actually get to it. So this ball, if I add this physic material in, there we go. And now if you just hit play, it should fall and bounce. Beautiful, cool. And see how it like slowly, slowly bounces and eventually it will stop. That I think is changed by the 0.8 bounciness. Like if I put it at one, I think it will bounce forever let's see like I don't think it ever um, slows down which we do want it to eventually <laughs> slow down so I put the bounciness at 0 0.8 so it kind of slowly reaches the ground eventually okay next up let's make our opponent so let's right click and create a 3d object that is a capsule I'm gonna call this opponent they will be at zero 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 there we go um, maybe actually a little bit up but you do want to make sure that this opponent here is touching the nav mesh, that's the blue floor. If they're hovering above it, you might get an error and it won't walk around. So make sure it's kind of intersecting the floor a little bit. So we go ahead and actually give it the nav mesh agent component. You can give it a faster speed if you want, like six. Um, that's like how fast it's gonna chase after the ball. And lastly, let's tag it. Let's give it a tag. We're gonna add a new tag, call it opponent. And back on the opponent, give it a tag, opponent. Sweet. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate this guy, right click duplicate and grab the blue handle and place him back in the back area. And I will call this guy back opponent. Everything else can be the same, same tag, same everything. Okay, sweet, our opponents are in place. Let's go ahead and create our player. So we're gonna right click, create a 3D object that's also going to be a capsule. I'm gonna call it player. Let's tag it as player, which already exists as a tag. And then the position will probably be like zero, I don't know, two on the Y. And let's drag him into our area, like negative 13, something like this. Cool, that looks about right. I know, I'm giving myself a lot of area to run. It's important. This player does need a character controller component. That's how we're gonna make it move around. And also go ahead and take the main camera here and child it to the player, since this will be a first person controller kind of game. So this is what our camera is seeing. And what I'd like is for you to position the camera where you want. For me, it's gonna be a little bit above the player and like behind it, and then maybe like rotated down, like what, 30? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so like as I'm moving around, I'm seeing it as my player. And then the other thing that you might wanna do, this field of view is set at 60, which is great. In testing, it was like a little bit hard to see what's going on. So I increased the field of view to be something like 75. If you increase it too much, the whole world gets warped and it's horrible. So just increased a little bit. It kind of gives like a fisheye effect though. So you may or may not like it. Okay, and that's our player setup. Now let's set up our UI. So our UI is all of our elements on the screen. So let's start with a UI image and I'm gonna call this crosshair. Let's set it to be in the middle of our screen and I'm gonna set it to be small, like, I don't know, 10 by 10. Yep, and you can give it a color. I think I'll color mine like a purple. This is where you're gonna be aiming, this little square here, while you like move and click around so that you know where you're aiming when you're trying to hit the volleyball. Now there is a canvas here, which is 
great. On your canvas, go to the scale mode and set it to be scaling with screen size so that as your screen, depending on what screen you're making this or playing this on, your UI elements stay the same size. Now let's right click the canvas and create a UI text mesh pro. And this opens up a little window here and you're gonna wanna click both buttons, import the essentials and the examples and extras. When that's done, you can just close that window. This TMP object that we just made is going to be the player score. And for the text input area, you can say like your score zero. In this little widget up in the corner here, hold down option shift and click the bottom corner. And that's gonna justify the text to the bottom. It's a little bit hard to see because of the color that it is. So you can also change the color of it to be like whatever. I will make mine like a purple. So you can actually like see it. I'm also going to disable wrapping and align it this way to the right. There we go. And we can also give it like a little bit of padding, like maybe negative 20 on the X. So it's like off that edge. Sweet, go ahead and right click and duplicate this. Let's call this opponent score. And this one in this little widget, hold option shift and justify it to the top. Uh, the X padding, we can give it 20 on the X, justify it to the left. You can change their color if you want. Maybe it'll be more of like a red. And then I'm gonna put their score. Sweet. I also kind of want to push it off of the top a little bit. Um, let's push the Y down like negative 10. Sweet. All right. Lastly, for our canvas, let's go ahead and right click and create a UI image. And this will be our title screen in the color. You can make it a little transparent and I'm going to make it that blue that we've seen. I'm going to make it bigger like a 600. Yeah. By 400. Maybe not that high. Sure. I wonder, we can also give it a sprite, an image. Yeah, whatever. Sure. Now it's got like a nice border around it. And then right click this title screen and we're going to create a UI TextMess Pro and this will be our title text. You can give it a name. I'm going to call it. It's kind of like volleyball. The font, the TMP font, it gave you a bunch of different options in here. Just a heads up. Like when you, um, when you imported those examples and extras, it gave you that. So we're going to center it. Maybe down here, we're going to give it like an outline and an underlay. That's like their shadow. Sweet. Um, I'm going to color this like a purple and give it a font that's like 60. Oh boy. Um, the width can be bigger, huh? 300, 400. Yeah, it's kind of like volleyball. That works for me. And that is our UI done. Now with everything here that we have, you are ready to code. That concludes part one. We are in the next part going to code the opponent, which is super duper easy.